Welcome back everyone to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage on this beautiful Friday, May 31st. It is the end of May now, a very active May it has been for weather. So let's dive right in and you can see no more active weather across the middle of the country with more severe weather, more heavy rain across the Great Plains as we go through today. We'll dive into that here in just a moment, but we're also looking at the tropics. Tropical season starts tomorrow on Saturday, June 1st, and you can see the National Hurricane Center still has that 10% chance of development over the next five to seven days just to the south of Mexico and to the west of Central America here and you can see that's across the eastern Pacific Ocean and currently the National Hurricane Center has no new tropical updates for the North Atlantic Ocean so it remains quiet here so far this tropical weather season. Let's look here at our low temperatures to start the day. We did start mild across the middle of the country from the upper Midwest down here through the Mississippi Valley back all the way into Texas here very mild down here into the Victoria Texas area. Temperatures there this morning starting off into the middle 80s and looking here at the afternoon can't complain across most of the country pretty pleasant temperatures unless you're down near the Gulf Coast where it has been downright hot over the last several days. Look at Phoenix up to 101 this afternoon as we go into the weekend more of the same heat to the south and more pleasant temperatures further north you go as we go into Saturday Sunday we start to see heat building across more of the central even northern plains in the Midwest with temperatures rising into the 80s, if not the 90s, further to the north here. We could have 90 degree temperatures up into parts of South Dakota, Nebraska, and Kansas as we go into Sunday. So thank you all for watching here. Make sure to subscribe to the channel here at Weather on the Go. We cover Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics on this channel. Make sure to like the video by giving it a thumbs up down below, especially if you like today's video so far. Also leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those after the video. But let's look at yesterday here. Here are the Storm Prediction Center filtered storm reports from your Wednesday or from your Thursday, uh, May 30th time frame. And you can see we do have those two tornado reports across West Texas here. Several wind and hail reports in the green and blue shaded colors there. We had 126 severe weather reports yesterday and more severe weather is in the offing as we go into later on this afternoon and this evening. We have three separate areas of an enhanced risk of severe weather one back here toward the front range down here into portions of eastern Colorado western Kansas into portions of New Mexico and the Texas Oklahoma Panhandle another area down here in south central Texas and coastal Texas here and then another area into the Arklamis region here across southeastern Arkansas northeastern Louisiana and western Mississippi the main mode of pre uh, precipitation and severe weather today will overwhelmingly be large hail and damaging winds. You can see the wind threat here is around 60 miles per hour across portions of those brown and yellow shaded colors. Same thing here into portions of the brown yellow shaded color there for hail. And we could have a couple tornadoes potentially for portions of Eastern Colorado into the Arklamis region and then down into coastal Texas as we go through the day. Let's look at the moisture feed as we go through the day here. You can see dew points rising into the 60s. Further north you go into portions of the central southern plains and 70 degree dew points the further south you go toward the Gulf Coast. So we have plenty of moisture in place for severe weather and you can see where well, that is leading to some thunderstorm fuel out there and that is plentiful especially in west texas where those cape values the convective available potential energy is actually over 3,000 joules per kilogram so looking at late this morning some active weather out there we do have some showers and thunderstorms across the plains those are scattered about not everybody is seeing those as we go into the afternoon we'll start to see more numerous development especially the closer to the mississippi valley you go as we go into the afternoon, maybe a rogue supercell here in central Texas. As we go into the evening, more supercell development here. You see the semi-discreet and discrete nature of those storms. These may be able to tap into that energy out there in West Texas, those 3,000 joules per kilogram of instability and produce those damaging wind gusts, maybe even a microburst type threat out here as we go through the day. And then here as we go into early Saturday morning, a couple supercells may survive toward the Red River Valley there into, say, northwest Texas, southwest Oklahoma, maybe into central Kansas, but they'll be falling apart with eastward extent. And then a rainfall shield, more stratiform rain, this, you you know, your everyday general light to moderate rain showers across the Mississippi Valley, especially the middle and upper Mississippi Valley, maybe some thunder added into that down here towards Arkansas. 
Mississippi and Western Tennessee into your early Saturday morning time frame. Here are your rainfall totals going between now and Saturday morning on June 1st. The heaviest rains will be felt across the middle and lower Mississippi Valley and stretching back toward Texas Hill Country here. Places like Houston, Lake Charles, up here toward Monroe, Louisiana, into say Little Rock here, Memphis, and then all the way up towards St. Louis. That's an area where we have those blues, purples, and reds anywhere from about an inch and a half to as much as three inches worth of rain will be possible there. And that could lead to a little bit heightened risk for flash flooding. There could be a marginal, even slight risk for flash flooding, especially the further south you go. So toward the middle and lower Mississippi Valley, stretching back toward eastern and central Texas, we do have that slight risk for flash flooding through your Saturday morning commute. Going in through the weekend here, you can see we do have a little bit of a short wave across portions of the country. A short wave brings more active weather, and if you blink, you miss it because you can see it's very faint as we go through the weekend there, and it's going to bring more severe weather across the middle of the country. We have another slight risk across the front range and into the Western Plains, all the way down here into portions of the Rio Grande Valley just about. You can see we have a marginal slight risk there, and it, the moisture is going to be there. It's not as far north here on Saturday, but you can see the moisture levels in the yellows and oranges. Generally, if you're in the yellows, 60 degree dew points, oranges more 70 degree dew points as we go into Saturday. That will lead to some stronger instability, especially there for Texas. We have quick access to the instability there off the Gulf of Mexico for portions of Texas. So you can see going through Saturday morning, more showers and thunderstorm activity here across most of the Mississippi Valley. The further north you go, this is mainly just going to be rain, maybe just a few rumbles of thunder. Further south you go, maybe some straight up thunderstorms across Mississippi. Probably nothing too severe there. And then as we go into Saturday afternoon, we're watching a couple of these storms developing out across the plains, but it's mainly Saturday evening around dinner time. Shortly thereafter, we have a quick upscale growth from supercells into lines of storms that could produce damaging winds, large hail, maybe even a couple of tornadoes here from Nebraska. Nebraska, south through Kansas, Oklahoma, and the Texas Panhandle here. So we'll be watching out for the areas like Dodge City, back here in towards the Elk City area in Oklahoma. Amarillo, Lubbock, Midland, even the Abilene area into Saturday evening. Then as we go into early Sunday morning, we quickly get rid of that instability so the atmosphere stabilizes and then we start to see quieter weather as we start the day on Sunday. Sunday, we have another threat for severe weather. That short wave moves a little bit further off to the north and east. Slight risk and marginal risk of severe weather respectively here in the dark green and yellow shaded color. The highest area of potential severe weather is in the eastern Dakotas, western Minnesota, down here into central Nebraska and northwest Western Kansas. That's a level two out of five. Again, that is a slight risk of severe weather. The moisture on Sunday will lift further north all the way up to the U.S. Canadian border like southern Manitoba may have dew points in the low 50s as we go into Sunday. So plenty of fuel for thunderstorms all the way up there into the upper Midwest and high plains as we go into Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. So let's walk you through this Sunday morning. Here are some thunderstorms across portions of the north uh, scattered about. Not everybody's going to see these as we go into Sunday afternoon. More scattered storms developing all across the Great Plains there as that short wave moves through. And then more organized activity as we get to peak daytime heating, similar to what we saw on Saturday, we're going to see on Sunday here. Peak heating around dinner time, shortly thereafter, supercell thunderstorms growing upscale into these lines of storms. And the area further north here is a little bit more uh, jet stream winds to work with, so more fuel to work with here. So I think these storms further north could have a little bit more of a punch with them with damaging winds, large hail, and some stronger uh, potentially rainfall and stuff like that with them as the further north you go. Then as we go into early Monday morning, I think some of that moves a little bit further east and kind of falls apart a little bit as it outruns the instability there across Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin early Monday morning. So here as we go through the weekend, here are your rainfall totals for Saturday. You can see the heaviest rains from the western Ohio Valley, western Great Lakes region, all the way down through Tennessee Valley and through Dixie Alley. So Mississippi, Alabama, and parts of Louisiana there near the Gulf Coast especially will be pretty wet as we go into Saturday. Some scattered storms about across the plains. Just make sure you have an umbrella handy as we go through the day on Saturday. Make sure you have a radar app handy as well. And then going through Sunday, the wettest weather will be across the upper Midwest, centered across Minnesota, the Hawkeye state of Iowa, back here into Nebraska and Kansas. We'll keep close tabs on that. Rainfall amounts for both of these days in those heaviest corridors of rain, really averaging around a half inch to an inch and a half of rain. So nothing too crazy there. 
as we go into next week, we're going to be heating up. So we have a lot of heat near the Gulf Coast, right? So as we go into next week, that's going to be building further north, but also further west with time. So across the western third of the country, we're really going to be heating up potentially closer to 30 degrees above the average for that five day average between Monday, June, June 3rd and Friday, June 7th. And looking at those temperatures early next week, here's the heat down across the south. It's starting to build north, but by the middle of the week, it's still there, but it's starts to build a little further west as well. Notice by the middle of next week, the Pacific Northwest is rather cool. We're going to be heating up in places like Southern Idaho, Oregon, into portions of Washington State, Nevada, Utah, a lot of these areas out West California will start to get a lot warmer as we get into late next week. That's with that ridge of high pressure out West. A trough across the East will bring cooler, almost fall like temperatures across portions of like Alberta, Canada here over towards Saskatchewan, Manitoba and Ontario, Canada, but also also into the United States for the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes down here into the Northeast will be feeling more of that fall like feel to those temperatures, especially during the morning hours. And let's look at the height anomalies as we go through next week. Monday, look up here to the left hand side of your screen. We got all these blues up here in Southwest Canada. We'll watch this as we go into Tuesday. That's going to be diving southeast. This is our next trough. Notice the negative tilt on here. So that means with you're looking at this during severe weather season, it has a negative tilt. It has a lot of dynamic with it, and it has a lot of heat energy to work with as well. We showed you those temperatures during the early and middle portion of next week in this area as it's going to be moving through. And you can see, look at all the instability it's going to be tapping into on Monday there across portions of the plains up into parts of the Midwest here. So Monday afternoon, scattered storms, maybe some supercells around, and then potentially some corridors of some storm activity across the plains, parts of the Midwest there Monday evening. As we go into Tuesday, Tuesday looks to be more of the dynamically enhanced day for severe weather, in my opinion. I think we have a lot more moisture, a lot more instability moving further north, and we have a lot of those jet stream winds overlapping that. So I think Tuesday, more organized severe weather across parts of the Midwest and upper Midwest. So we could have these lines of storms develop and diving toward places like Des Moines, Chicago, St. Louis. We'll have to wait and see about Kansas City and even up there toward the Green Bay area and Milwaukee. So we'll be keeping an eye on that as we go into Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. And then the cold front moves through the middle of next week. We showed you those temperatures cooling off almost fall like air mass across the Great Lakes that will get rid of our instability the atmosphere will stabilize and push all that unstable air further south and yes look at that Texas again we have a lot of instability there so more storms as we go into Wednesday afternoon, eastern Ohio Valley, the southeast back there toward Texas, where that unstable air is, and that will continue as we go into Wednesday evening as well. So looking at the rainfall totals between right now at this time through the middle of next week, Wednesday, June 5th, the heaviest rains is going to be right here across the middle of the country, across the heartland, across the upper Midwest, the Corn Belt region there into the lower Midwest, the Ohio Valley down through the Mississippi Valley here. We're going to see lots of rainfall totals in those yellow, orange, and red shaded colors of around one, two, even three inches of rain with possibly even locally higher amounts than that as we go through the middle of next week. So thank you all for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below. It's the thumbs up button. If you did like today's weather forecast, subscribe to my channel as we do cover Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics right here on this channel. The tropical weather season does begin tomorrow. So we'll be doing regular updates on that on this channel. Also make sure to leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to all of those after the video, and I hope everyone has a wonderful upcoming weekend out there.